Welcome to Aussie Indian and I have got one of the legends of Australian cricket, Simon Katic. Simon, welcome to Aussie Indian. Thanks very much. Congratulations on uh, reaching the final of uh, the Big Bash here and uh, uh, that was just a touch and go, wasn't it? The <laughs> oh look, unfortunately uh, it wasn't quite the, the result we wanted in the final. We got completely outplayed by Brisbane Heat but um, they were deserved winners. They played very well at the business end of the tournament. Um, but our guys, I thought, were, were fantastic all the way throughout. We had a slow start but um, managed to find confidence and form at the back end of the tournament and um, you know, had some exceptional performers. And end of the day, you know, we lost the final. It would have been great to win it, but um, we still have qualified for the Champions League in India in, I think, September. So hopefully uh, we can go one better uh, there and, um, against all the teams from around the world. Well, when you played for New South Wales, you actually won the tournament uh, a few years back. I'm sure you want to repeat that performance. Yeah, it'd certainly be nice. Um, I know the guys were pretty disappointed with our efforts in South Africa last year um, for the Scorchers, so um, that's something that we'd like to make amends for and, and have a better tournament this time around. Um, because once you, if you can get through to the semis, anything's possible. We all know that 2020s um, can be a fickle game, so it's all on the day, and you only need a couple of guys to fire, and, and all of a sudden you're winning it. So um, you know, hopefully we can yeah, make amends later in the year. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, you have undertaken several tours to India and uh, you have come up with some really fantastic performances in India. If I ask you to put a finger on some, a couple of things which resulted in this uh, uh, loss of the test match at Chennai, what would you say? Oh, look, there's no doubt in India you have to bat well in your first innings um, because it definitely gets harder as the game goes on and I think we saw that in Chennai. Um, I didn't see a lot of the second innings, but it obviously is going to be spinning more and, and more footmarks and, and lower bounce, so that makes it tough not only to survive but also to score. So, um, as we saw, you know, the second innings was a lot lower than the first the other day. So, I think that's crucial. And, and then obviously, you know, being able to knock the tail over that hurt Australia in that, um, you know, that Test match. Obviously, Donny, um, you know end up getting his big double hundred and, and some big partnerships at the back end of the innings. So those sort of two things, you know, they're, they're pretty obvious, but um, they, they also make a big difference to the game. But uh, if I look at uh, Moses and Ricketts innings, he, he virtually showed everyone how to bat on a wicket like that, a turning wicket. Yeah, look, for a guy on debut, um, he batted with a lot of maturity to, to not only bat well on the first innings when we were under pressure, but also on the second innings to back it up uh, and to be there at the end. So not an easy thing to do in those conditions coming in at seven um, when there's you know filters all around the bat and you know facing quality spinners. So um, he was brilliant on debut. Well, uh, Hyderabad is the next venue. Uh, you have played uh, on Hyderabad wicket a couple of times. It's more like the Australian wicket, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is. There's a lot more pace uh, and probably carry in the wicket. So I played there a couple of times, only probably 2020 matches, but um, the, the ball definitely carries through probably more than you expect in India. Um, so it'll be interesting to see whether they do prepare something that's maybe a bit drier and, and is going to spin from day one because then obviously it keeps both teams in the contest if you do happen to lose the toss and, and there's at least some spin there on day one for, for whoever is having the bowl. Well, Australia, of course, uh, has toured time and again in India and they have found the spinning wickets. Why do they go with only one spinner and four pacemen? That I'm not sure about. Um, I guess in the past, um, having toured there, you know, we were fortunate to have Shane Warne in the team. Yes. So, you know, he, he provided that role and, and did it so well. But I know when we won in 2004, the Quicks did a lot of the damage for us. Um, and, you know, whether it was Gillespie, McGrath or, or uh, Kasparowicz who was playing, you know, they, they got a lot of reverse swing and the ball kept low and, and they got a lot of bolds and LBs. So they were very successful for us in that tour. Um, so, you know, it just goes to show we didn't need two spinners on that tour to, to win it. But one thing that did stand out for me was that we won the toss a lot and batted first. Yeah. And that, that is a big advantage in India. But you still have to go out there and get the runs. So, um, as I said, if you can get over 400, you're always going to be in the game. Of course, after uh, this tour of India, Australia is uh, heading to back-to-back -back Ashes series. Uh, what do you make out of the current English team? Oh, I think they're very strong. Um, you know, they certainly enjoy playing in their home conditions. And I think last time they came to Australia, um, they performed very well um, away from 
you know, English conditions. It's probably been a while since they've won in Australia. So um, they're a very experienced team now. You look through their batting lineup. Um, obviously, I've lost Strauss, but you know, Cook's certainly gone to a different level as captain, and also with the bat. And then you throw in Peterson, Bell, Trot. These guys are all you know hardened Test players now. Um, they'll have a few young faces coming into the lineups, but you know, bowling-wise as well, they're very experienced with Anderson, um, Swan. You know, whether it's Finn or, or Broad or whoever it is, you know, they, they certainly are a very experienced team. So uh, it, it should be a very good series. Mm. And also they won a series in India after a long time. And the two spinners who performed are Panasar and Swan. And I thought that should give some indication to Australian selectors who they should be picking. Yeah, look, I, I forgot to mention Monty. I mean, Monty's been outstanding for England recently. Um, you know, fantastic effort to win in, in, in India. Um, they haven't done that for a long time, and you, who knows? Like, given the Ashes has played like July onwards, if the summer is hot, um, which I'm sure England's probably not going to be, but um, if the wickets do tend to get dry there, you know, they might play two spinners against us, um, given the, our reluctance to play mm -hmm. spinners at the moment. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see which part they go down. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, English team is coming back to Australia. Uh, obviously, uh, Australia would. Uh, be looking for that opportunity to play on their home ground. What do you think are the chances? Yeah, look, I think a lot's going to depend on what happens in England first because um, we all know that depending on the result, you know, the team can change uh, whether you've done well or you haven't done well. So given that uh, we're playing, you know, one of the top teams, um, there's no doubt that, you know, England are going to be tough in this next six months or so. So, um, yeah, it'll be we have to wait and see what happens in those that first tour in uh, England first. Well, this so-called rotation policy of uh, Cricket Australia, do you think it has served the game in Australia well? Oh, look, I think it's certainly generated a lot of public comment. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that think that it's it's not right. The public, you know, have been robbed of probably seeing at times the best players playing and the best team playing. Um, but there's also reasons behind that as well, as has been explained by either the selectors or the coaching staff or whatever. So they're the ones that have the inside information on, you know, guys' workloads and all that sort of stuff and how they're travelling physically. So they're the ones that obviously know. So, um, but you know, the public are entitled to to be uh, disappointed at times. You know, when you a couple of your top players aren't playing. Simon, after you retired, uh, you're still playing 2020. Uh, anything else uh, you're looking forward to in your career? Yeah, look, I'm still playing first-class cricket in England. Um, I'll be playing the county season this year and um, still playing yeah, 2020 cricket here in Australia and just uh, had a little stint in Bangladesh, um, which was enjoyable. And then, yeah, I just, I'm still playing club cricket here at Randwick Petersham. So I still love playing. It's just that now with a young family, I needed to have a bit of balance and I, I didn't feel I could do it 12 months of the year. So um, now I'm enjoying uh, that nice balance to my life. Thanks for talking to us, Indian Simon. Pleasure.